How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lai Hobby Time. This week I'm building something that is a little bit different. This project is more personal to me because it is inspired by memories from my childhood. When I was six years old, my family moved from Denver, Colorado to Mongolia. And we lived there for 12 years. It's kind of weird now that I am so far removed from that it becomes more and more abstract but the memories of growing up in that place are still very real and I wanted to build something inspired by that the first vehicle that my family had in Mongolia was one of these vans Mongolia was a part of the Soviet Union all the way up until the wall came down. So when my family first got there, the majority of the vehicles were Russian made. I had a hard time tracking down a model kit for this van. There weren't any people locally, as in, in Denver, that sold this kit. So I ordered one online, and it ended up coming from Lithuania which makes a little bit more sense given that they were also a Soviet bloc country. More Russian van model kits on hand, I guess. I gave everything a matte finish to protect the base coat. And then I started assembling. I'm a little more used to assembling Star Wars or other sci-fi related kits, so putting together a car, just a plain old normal car, was a nice change of pace. All of these vans are four-wheel drive, which is great because when we first got to the country, a lot of the roads were unpaved still. We had some friends who lived right outside the city, and whenever we got to their road, we had to use four-wheel drive. And I, six-year-old me, always thought the van was going to roll over. That was a lot of fun. After I was done with the van, it was time to move on to the other half of this diorama. Historically, Mongolians are nomads. Their ancestors traveled around the eastern Eurasian steppe looking for a better grazing land for their animals. And they have lived in these houses, which are called gares for a couple thousand years now. Gares are similar to yurts, but they are a little different. If you look at pictures side by side, uh, you can see the difference. But in those few thousand years that they've been living in these, the design has not changed much, if at all, and they are pretty incredible. The basic design of a gear is a central hub held in the air by two posts with a series of spokes that go from the hub and are held up on the other end by the latticed wall. There is also one door that always faces south. I've helped put a few of these together in real life, as in one to one scale, and I think you could do it with as few as two people, but with three it'll go faster. Mm -hmm. 
Most gears have a similar set of furniture that sits against the outside wall. I made mine out of balsa wood and styrene. Gears are heated using a stove that sits in the center of the room. It has a little chimney that is piped out through the top. This is also where they do their cooking. I didn't have a little stove on hand, so I built one out of an old satellite model and some styrene. With the size and shape of the gear, having one little stove in the middle is actually really efficient. The temperature can drop as low as 50 or 60 below with wind chill, and it'll keep you warm. The gear has definitely proven itself and lasted the test of time. I also made one of their traditional instruments, which is a horsehead fiddle, or moringhor as they would call it, and you will actually hear it in the background track at the end of this video. After all of the furnishings and fixtures were done, I moved on to the fabric. I added a thin piece of felt around the outside to make it look a little bit more padded. And also because there is actually a layer of felt around all the gears. This gets pretty hot in the summertime because it is so well insulated. So there is the ability to roll up the felt on the bottom, creating a little window, which allows for a nice breeze. And then it made the door out of some more balsa wood and styrene. And I cut out a piece of fabric to make into a wall hanging rug. A lot of Mongolians have these ornate rugs that they hang on the back wall of their gear. So I put some Mod Podge on a piece of fabric, let that dry, and then I started priming everything. A lot of the furniture and wooden things in Mongolia are painted orange. I'm not sure what the reason is for this. I think it's maybe part style, part symbolism. I don't know what the symbolism is, but I think it's kind of cool. I used a white gel pen to get some fine lines and add some designs to the furniture. After that, I moved on to the rugs. I then moved on to the ground outside the gear, used a plaster Mod Podge mixture. While that was still wet, I dragged the car through it to leave some tracks. 
I used a hair dryer to speed that along. I also added a little bit more of a pattern on the door. I forgot to do that earlier. Also added some sand to help add texture, which I sealed in place with a water glue mixture. And I added some flocking. I moved all the furniture in. And I added some little tufts of grass. And I called it good. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a meaningful project for me. I really enjoyed making it. It was fun to go relive all those memories. Have a great week, everyone. I will see you all next time.